Right now on CBS 12 News this morning, it took nearly a year, but Martin County teachers were finally getting more money. Why the district dragged its feet and what it took to get the pay bump. This year in particular has been more of a challenge, I would say, than last year. A new survey revealing Palm Beach County schools want simultaneous teaching eliminated. Why challenges they are facing teaching, what challenges they are facing teaching during a pandemic. And mostly dry skies, but a very humid start to our day. We'll take a closer look at your mung, muggy Tuesday morning. It's a new day. This is CBS 12 News This Morning. Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Matt Lincoln. I'm Ashley Glass. A really eye-opening look here, how some of our local teachers feel about what's going on in the classrooms. We will get to it all, but first, let's get a check on that forecast with Lauren. Ashley, thanks. And hey, it's not a bad start out there for us this morning. It's just extremely humid once again. Let's look at storm track radar. We've got some storms that are moving across I-10 right now. There's a warm front boundary that's stalled well to our north. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. But storm track radar mostly dry. We had a few showers that moved through Okeechobee County. There's some rain right now off the coast of the Treasure Coast, but this is actually moving slowly off towards the northwest. So I think we might avoid some of that rain, although it wouldn't be a bad thing to see because we are extremely dry outside. 68 degrees in Okeechobee, 75 in Stewart, West Palm Beach at 76, 74 in uh, Fort Pierce. We're all pretty much in the 70s along the coastline. I think my graphics just went to bed. They don't want to report the temperature out there for us right now, but everyone pretty much waking up around 74, 75 degrees. Very warm out there for us today. This is the hour by hour for Okeechobee. Your high temperatures are going to be mostly sunny to partly cloudy. Or excuse me, your high temperatures are in mid 80s with a mostly sunny to partly cloudy sky. You're going to drop again into the 70s through the evening hours. Closer to the coastline, still very warm. We're all dealing with warm temperatures today. Mid to upper 80s outside, really humid out there too. The sun comes up for us just before 715. Uh, with the humidity though, it is going to feel closer to 90 at times. We'll track that next cold front. Still ahead. Matt Ashley. All right, take a look right now on our roads and nothing right now at 501. No incidents to report from Sebastian South to Boca Raton. This is a look right now uh, in uh, Palm Beach County. We are seeing no issues right there in West Palm. Well, keeping an eye on education and finally more money is on the way for teachers in Martin County. The union and the school district came to an agreement last night. Yeah, this was a big problem here. Martin County was the only district in the entire state that did not submit a plan for raises, which the governor called for nearly 10 months ago. Let's bring in Madeline Montgomery now live this morning from the Martin County School District in Stuart Madeline. Threats were made before this finally came to a head with an agreement. It was pretty heated, Ashley. The state even was involved, threatening legal action if this all wasn't resolved. But after hours of negotiations here yesterday, there finally is a resolution. Almost a year ago, Governor DeSantis passed a law requiring school districts to raise salaries for new teachers. The law aimed to get starting teacher salaries to over $47,000. At the beginning of this school year, Martin County teachers that are new only made a little over $38,000. State districts were supposed to implement raises by October. Martin County was the only district that still hadn't done so, and district officials tell me it's taken so long because Martin County's Education Association was wanting raises for veteran teachers as well. The president of the association posted a video to Twitter saying the new agreement is only the beginning of raises for Martin County teachers. Yes, this will be great and hopefully we'll be able to get started uh, right away in a couple of weeks uh, so that we can get started on next year's contract and get that resolved as soon as possible. The raises are coming from state money. Martin County received around $3.4 million. According to the new law, 80% of that is to be used to raise new teacher salaries. The rest of the money can be used to increase veteran teacher salaries. And we have reached out to the school district and to the Education Association to get the details of what exactly the raises are going to look like here. And we'll get those answers to you as soon as we have them. For now, live in Stewart, Madeline Montgomery, CBS 12 News. All right, Maddie, and Palm Beach County school bus drivers are calling on the district for better pay, safer work conditions, and more hours. And they say they won't stop until they get it. They protested at the district headquarters just yesterday, claiming they're doing extra work to sanitize the buses during the pandemic, and they're at risk when students don't wear masks on the bus. The drivers say they should be compensated for the current working conditions. District officials say the local bus drivers are some of the top paid in South Florida and are also giving access to the same health care and benefits as teachers. The drivers plan to protest every Monday until they feel this issue's been resolved. 
And this morning, we're getting a much better look just how tough this year has been on teachers, some students learning virtual, some in classrooms. Yeah, Ash, the uh, Classroom Teachers Association of Palm Beach County conducted a survey with 3,100 of its teachers responding. One thing we're seeing is that almost all of them feel strongly at simultaneous teaching. That's having to teach some students in class while other students are home watching through a monitor just did not work. See here this question. Did simultaneous teaching help or harm the ability of the average student to learn effectively? 94% say it harms. Next, teachers were asked if they said they saw increased levels of cheating during simultaneous learning. Here, 75% in the blue say yes, they did. And 86% of teachers saw students jumping back and forth randomly between in-person and virtual instruction. Now we took some of these concerns to teachers. They told us juggling between in-person students and at-home students has been a major struggle. I feel like I don't have as um, great of a connection as I normally do with my students. Let's have cla only classes that have remote kids and only classes that have brick and mortar kids and do not mix them all. As part of the survey, 93% would like to see the simultaneous teaching gone for next season. Now, we reached out to the school district. They told us, quote, decisions regarding the modality of instruction in the fall will be based on governance made at the state level and science regarding the pandemic. The district is currently actively discussing various scenarios and options that would ultimately be made in the best interest of students and staff. In other words, a decision hasn't been made about simultaneous teaching next year yet. Now this survey touched on a lot more, including how well the teachers thought their schools were following COVID protocols. That's coming up in 30 minutes. This morning, the number of unaccompanied migrant children in U.S. custody along the U.S.-Mexico borders reached record numbers here. Up to 18,000 children are now in custody. Let's go over to Kara now at the live desk. And, and Kara, this latest information we're getting, it shows we could be seeing a huge surge over the next few months. Where is this report coming from? Yeah, that's right, Ashley. The current crisis at the border is showing no signs of slowing down with lawmakers from both sides of the aisle playing the blame game. Meanwhile, the number of unaccompanied children crossing the border expected to skyrocket over the next few months. That's according to a new report by Axios citing leaked documents. It shows the Biden administration projects the number of unaccompanied kids crossing the border will jump from more than 16,000 this month to as many as 26,000 per month by September. Right now, shelters for minors already reaching full capacity. The Biden administration saying it's pursuing longer term solutions to help with the surge. We know this will be a diplomatic process. Our view is it's not if, but when uh, we work through with these countries the best ways we can work together to address root causes. And a number of facilities are now helping with the overflow of unaccompanied minors. The Dallas Convention Center uh, is sheltering rather thousands of young boys. The San Diego Convention Center that is reserved for young girls, 13 to 17. Lawmakers from both parties visited the border over the weekend calling for action. Former President Donald Trump also says he plans to go there within the next few weeks. Matt. All right, Kara, thank you. Still ahead, caught on camera the moment a driver crashes head on to a sheriff's office patrol car. Why police say they believe that person lost control. Plus, the World Health Organization is expected to release its full report on the origins of coronavirus. Why some are already critical that it's not transparent. Tracking a couple showers out there this morning, although most of us dry on shore. We've got a warm front stalled up to our north, but a cold front is moving in in a couple of days. We'll take a closer look at the timing and the cooler air that it brings next.